Hey y'all. Hey y'all. Welcome back to the internet. Design 264 with Avery today, a tutorial. And it is called Shape Builder, Pathfinder, and Align Tools in Illustrator. So these are great for creating more complex shapes, lining up your shapes. You'll see. I you'll see. It's pretty awesome. Okay, let's start with Shape Builder. So we know about a lot of the shapes, but let's do N for the pencil tool. We'll create a random shape here. Then we'll do M for the rectangle tool. Create a shape like that. I'm going to hit V, move it close together, and then L to create an ellipse. Uh, if I hit V, click off of it, you can already see we got some interesting things going on there, right? Now let's go to the Shape Builder tool, because right now we have three discrete shapes, and we want this to just be one thing. So the Shape Builder tool allows us to do that. So first thing we're going to do is click, drag, select them all. Go over here to my tools, Shape Builder tool, so Shift, M. And you can see what happens. We see all the intersecting areas of the shapes. We, we have grayed out areas. Um, you can kind of, you can see what the Shape Builder tool already is starting to do to manipulate our, um, our objects. So if I click and drag, and from that the center of the square to the ellipse you can see we lost um, a portion of the ellipse right it became part of the square so i can do again click and drag and now this is one shape so i can click and drag and now i have one single shape so i'm going to go back in time with control or command z okay shape builder tool so i can just do one drag, click and drag through the entire thing, blammo, we have one shape, easy. But it's nice to have the ability to um, to do like a few of them. So say for example, I wanted just those shapes together, and then, let's see, I want to turn that into a, like, a shape to remove. So I'll show you what I did. So with the Shape Builder tool, um, with the Shift M, instead of clicking and dragging through shapes, you just click a shape, and then if I switch to, um, if I can hit A on my keyboard to get to my direct selection tool or the Control Command, very much like the Pen tool, remember that from the last a previous tutorial, um, I get my direct selection tool, and I have to click off the shape, then come back in. And then I can hit delete and remove uh, some of the overlapping areas. So we get some really cool things really quickly with the with the shaper tool. Um, so then we hit V. I'll select it all again, and I want to just turn that into one shape instead of having these overlapping shapes. So Shift M for the shaper tool. Click, drag through them all. Done. Cool. Um, you can see we have a separate shape there. So. I hadn't talked about this, but things like these don't necessarily touch. If you want them to be um, together, you click, drag, and do Shift G, which is to group. Oh my God! Click and drag. Not Shift G. Control or Command G. Thanks for sticking with me. Okay, sweet. Actually, let me go back. I want to keep using this example because we are going to switch really quickly to the pathfinder tool and realize we actually don't need this tool very much but it is here if we want to use it so if you click and drag over multiple shapes um, or just a reminder click shift click shift holding down shift um, select those the properties window which is predictive of what you want to do is like oh yeah you want to use Pathfinder because you have multiple things selected and that's what Pathfinder deals with. So if I click right here in the ellipse, I have these more options. But you can see maybe based off of these little icons what Pathfinder is capable of. So this one, if you hover over it, you get the preview of, of a little description of what it does, is Unites. So I click it, Unites all the shapes. So like I said, Shape Builder deals with this. I'm going to click and drag over everything and look at some of the other Hi, where'd my pathfinder go? Oh, it's already, I didn't undo it, there we go. 
click and drag, Pathfinder. Um, this one, click to minus front. So this will be the last shape that I've built, which is on top, um, to minus it. So it looks like it did everything in front. So it would, uh, the two on top affected the, the back one. Cool. If I want to just remove this from that, um, or remove the ellipse from the square, because the ellipse was the last shape that I built. So that's that's what the minus top is. Um, but again, Shape Builder can do it. Let's see what other things we have. Click to intersect. We'll do no results. Please select two. Mm -hmm. Click to intersect. It gets the intersection. Again, Shape Builder. Um, the only thing that maybe you might find more appealing than trying to do the just click in each area of intersection um, with the shape builder tool is do this tool which is divide and so right now if i click off of it if i have this selection tool it will select all of it but if i click a to get to the direct selection tool i can come into these individual areas and remove things that way okay so let's divide with a pathfinder which you might find more useful than trying to do that with the shaper tool Depends. Um, let me go back in time. Command Z. Cool. Now they're back to our original three shapes. Really quickly, a line. So this is more of, you know, if you're looking for uh, very specific things, if you make, well, let me just show you. So a line. Again, in the properties panel is this predictive thing. It's like, oh yeah, you selected multiple shapes. This might be a, uh, an activity, an action you want to do to it. So in the panel here, you can see what happens. Um, so if I click horizontal left, it aligns all of them to their right here. That the the mo the leftmost point will align. Similarly, the left rightmost point will align. Right here, horizontal, they align in the middle. At the top. All right, you guys get it, right? Um, you can also have them uh, be distributed by space. So that is actually maybe a little bit more. So they're all evenly spaced based off of um, their points. I mean, these are already almost perfectly spaced. But if you click on the ellipse, right, it adjusts the, the spacing so it's the exact same in between them. I think that's it for a line. Um, oh, you can also let me pull this back in. They can align to based off of each other, which is the default, right? Or if you come here, so that's aligned to selection. You can align to the key object, which would be the last one selected. Or you hit while you have them all selected, you just click one, and you see that the highlight that turns it into the key object, the one that is has the um, thicker highlight stroke. And then it will align all to that one, um, if that makes sense. It, it's doing a very similar thing. Let me just say. So it would so say, if you hit with all of them selected to just the selection, it will centralize those, right? Um, based off of their, like the, the middle point where they are all located, so which is about right there. If you, um, with them all selected, click just one again without hitting shift, but just click it while they're selected, and you get the, the thicker highlight line, that switches here automatically to align to key object, and then watch what happens. They all line up there, right, with the key object. And then the last um, selection option within align is aligned to the artboard. So this just aligns to the airport. Cool. All makes sense. Boop, boop, boop. All right. So that's it. Hope that's helpful and useful. Shape Builder.